modern miracles of sound motion pictures and radio open up vast sources of entertainment and instruction. To benefit from these, we need our ears, which interpret for us the multitude of sound waves they receive. Now, if you will lend me your ears while watching this picture on the screen, I will tell you about these invisible waves and how our ears are able to convert them into sound. We all know that if a pebble is dropped into water, ring-like ripples spread in all directions over the surface. A doorbell ringing sends out similar but invisible wave-like impulses which travel through the air with a speed of about 1,100 feet per second. Sounds of every kind are transmitted to our ears by just such waves. Even now, as my voice comes to you, it is carried by these airwaves to be conveyed to your own brain by nerve impulses created within your ear. As we shall see, this feat of conversion requires the highly refined and perfect mechanism which is our ear. To begin with, air impulses are caught by the outer shell and directed into the ear canal. Now let us look into this canal by using a specially designed instrument like this otoscope which is used by physicians when examining our ears. There in the center we see a small disc which is the drum membrane. Now here it is at very close range and very much enlarged. Sound waves beat against this membrane as drumsticks beat upon a kettle drum or tympanum. So it is naturally called the tympanic membrane. It lies a little more than an inch from the outer opening and completely shuts off the eardrum from the ear canal, just as a drum head completely covers a drum. Hidden immediately beyond this barrier lies the oddly shaped and highly specialized organ which by far surpasses any instrument of human invention in its ability to detect and to interpret sounds of every conceivable kind and degree. It is indeed rightly called the most remarkable mechanical system in the human body. And now let us examine the general position of this apparatus when seen from the front. Here is the ear canal and the more internal parts which have an outlet into the throat. The Eustachian tube. This important connecting passage opens just above the tonsil. Like other important sense organs, the ear lies close to the brain. All sound waves entering the ear are converted into nerve impulses. These impulses are conveyed to the brain by the auditory nerve, the shortest path to the auditory center, which controls the organ and where sound perception or hearing is located. The bones of the skull also encase the inner ear. Here we can see it occupying a group of intricate hollows and channels. These are safely protected within the hardest portion of the temporal bone. This portion is actually the hardest bony structure in the whole body. Now let us greatly enlarge the picture of one ear so that we may examine its construction and its parts in greater detail in this sectional view. The ear is divided into three parts. First, the external or outer ear, consisting of the shell or pinna, and the auditory canal or meatus. These and many of the parts that are to follow have been given their names because they resemble familiar objects. A second, the middle ear or eardrum, also called the tympanum, consisting of the drum membrane, already compared to a drum head, and the drum cavity. This is shut away from the outer ear by the drum membrane, but communicates with the throat by means of the Eustachian tube, already mentioned. The most striking feature of the middle ear are these three tiny but delicately fashioned bones. They're called the ear bones, or ossicles. Like the outer ear, the middle ear contains air. It is the purpose of the Eustachian tube to equalize the air pressure on both sides of the drum membrane to prevent its being injured by violent noises or changes in air pressure. Beyond the middle ear lies the third part, called the inner ear or labyrinth. Unlike the outer and the middle ear, this part is filled with a liquid instead of air and contains the delicate apparatus which transforms sound waves into nerve impulses. 
And now let's look at a still larger view of the middle ear with its three ear bones or ossicles. 